If you want satellite connectivity in an Android phone, you can do it right now. This is the Yuli Phone 23 something or other. Um, this is not a review of that. This talks to satellites. I've tested it, it works, but this is a specialized piece of hardware. And if you just have a regular Android phone and you want satellite connectivity, it's about to come. And it's not just me pulling that out of thin air. There are some concrete clues that tell us that that is happening. And I'm gonna share that with you. I'm also gonna share what that's gonna mean for everything with the Android, with connectivity. And I think what's gonna happen is it's gonna offer at least what the iPhone 14 and 15 do in terms of SOS in the backcountry. And it's gonna go a step further, which is interesting. So let's go over the clues. First, let's just go to the source. Let's go to Google. Now there's a new version of Android called Android 15 and it is released to the public as a developer preview. And right in the documentation, they talk about satellite support, auto connect to satellite. And it's true or false whether it is connected to a non-terrestrial network. So what does this mean for an end user or for an app developer? It means that if you have an app, you can figure out whether you're connected to a cell tower on earth or satellite in the sky. That's important, right? Because that means you could take something like a, a Zolio device, which does that automatic switching between Wi-Fi, cellular and the satellite. And now you can move that functionality right into the phone so or an app. So there could be a Zolio app and you could just send messages via satellite directly from your phone without having to have that little Zolio box. So that's a very cool thing. Other thing official that's interesting is it says it provides support for SMS and MMS applications, as well as preloaded RCS applications. What does that all mean? An SMS is just a text message. It's really the same kind of thing that you can send on an inReach or a traditional satellite communicator. I never thought I'd say that traditional satellite communicator, but that's the case. RCS is a basically a rich text message where you can attach photos, attach videos, do emojis and everything. So if that's gonna support that, think about how powerful that would be. Think about if you're in an emergency situation with a um, Garmin inReach and you're typing back and forth, hunting and pecking letters with these little buttons here to get your message across about a medical situation or being lost. Think about how that different that would be if you were able to go on a phone and take a picture of where you are, take a picture of your wound or whatever the situation is and send that to emergency services and get feedback on what's happening from those visuals and from a longer text message. That's a game changer. Even in a situation that's not critical, right? Just say you're out backpacking with friends and everyone's hiking at a different pace. Instead of having maybe two-way radios in the backcountry, you could potentially just text yourself back and forth. You could text a latitude and longitude and say, hey, this is where I'm setting up camp, you know, stop here or turn right when you see this junction. So that's all really exciting. Now, there's another thing that's not official that's interesting. Now, 9to5Google decompiled the new Google Messages app, and they found these messages in there that support texting via satellite. And what's interesting, um, well, two things. One, it says doesn't include photos and videos, so maybe support for MMS and RCS isn't quite there yet. But what's more interesting is that you can message with anyone, including emergency services. So what that is, is that's Google one-upping um, Apple and saying you can do two-way text messages in the backcountry. Now, how that works, how you pay for it, all of that, I'm gonna get into that in a second when we talk about some of the networks that might be supporting this and how that's gonna work. But you know, if Android 15 gets released and the carriers support it and you can do two-way text messaging, um, in the back country and maybe even roll it into your regular carrier bill. That's a pretty awesome thing. I would not be surprised if Apple follows up and maybe announces that, that type of thing in the future as well. I know there's a um, developer conference, I think coming up in June. It'll be interesting to see what they say there, but that's another interesting clue. And then there's one more clue uh, that we can see. Some Pixel users who update their phone are starting to see a new option under safety emergency and settings called Satellite SOS. I can't confirm whether these screenshots are real. And basically what it says is that you can send a text to emergency services to get help when you don't have cellular network. And what I found interesting was at the end, there is a little call out for Garmin search and rescue insurance, which implies that if this is real, Garmin response would be handling the emergency calls um, when they're not in cellular range, so anything over a satellite. And it makes sense because most emergency services, at least here in the United States, are not set up for backcountry rescue. They're set up to send an ambulance, fire truck, or police car. 
They're not there for like maritime rescues, backcountry rescues. And a lot of the 911 call centers can't accept text message either. And that's why Apple had to set up those response centers as a kind of bridge between their emergency satellites and the 911 call center. So snapping something like Garmin response in there makes sense because that's essentially that bridge as well. How is this going to work on a regular Android phone? First off is a modem that's in the phone that can connect to a satellite. This is not new. In 2023, Qualcomm announced a Snapdragon chipset that could connect with Iridium satellites above the earth. And they did a demo at CES and they tried to sell this as a service called Snapdragon Satellite. And I'm not I'm familiar with the details of what that business arrangement was or how that would have been charged to the carriers or whatever it might be. That Snapdragon satellite just sort of quietly uh, shut down last year, but those chipsets, those Snapdragon, I think um, eight chipsets that are in the phones are in the phone still. And it could just be a matter of uh, a phone company like Samsung turning that on on your chipset and allowing that type of connectivity or something that the carrier does. But some phones already have those chipsets. And you know the iPhone has a Snapdragon chipset that connects with the Global Star network. The more exciting thing and more impactful thing is a technology that's creating cell phone towers or effectively a cell phone tower on a satellite. Now, obviously a cell phone tower on the surface of the earth is stationary on the surface and it's easy to connect to. It's more challenging to connect to a satellite with the phone because those satellites are hundreds of miles above the earth moving at hundreds of miles, hundreds of miles an hour. So it's a relatively new technology, but it is happening. And Starlink is at the forefront of this. Starlink has done some tests and they are able to get 17 um, Mbps uh, down, I guess down, I'm not sure up, but they're able to get that down. And that is more than enough to do a voice phone call, uh, like a Skype call. I'm not sure about the latency and how that would all work. But if you go to the Starlink um, webpage there, they talk about this and they say that um, text will be offered this year and voice will be offered next year. So it's happening. They feel confident in it. I would take those um, dates with a grain of salt, but it's not just Starlink and SpaceX. There's also AST Space Mobile and a company called Link that did a test, I think in Mongolia, where they were able to allow people to connect with their cell phones over satellite. So this has been done. It's been happening. Right now, obviously, the bottleneck is getting satellites into space that have this technology. And in that case, Starlink and SpaceX obviously have the advantage there. They're, you know, chucking satellites into space every two or three minutes. Um, not literally, but they're doing a lot more than the other ones are doing. So what does that mean as an end user? I have a cell phone. Here's an Android phone. I have this and this has T-Mobile on it. Will I be able to connect to a satellite? Well, the other component, because you're not doing a deal directly with Starlink or AST Space Mobile, is that those um, satellite companies are making deals with the cell phone carriers in order to integrate it. So Starlink has a deal with T-Mobile, AST Space Mobile, I think, has a deal with Google and AT&T. And I think what that's going to effectively mean is that your carrier is going to handle the billing for messages over satellite. So if you have T-Mobile, whether it's an iPhone or whether it's an Android, and now you can connect to a uh, satellite you know, via 5G and you can do a text message via that. That would bi be billed somehow through T-Mobile or if it was AT&T through AS or AS AST, it would be through AT&T. A lot of acronyms flying around here. But that's exciting. So we see the groundwork that's been laid on the Android operating system to support Satellite communications, we see satellites going up that have 5G towers. We see phones that have satellite chipsets in them. There'll be more coming out, you know, obviously in the future. And we see partnerships with carriers that will allow for the billing and sort of the, the business logistics of how this would all work and how you would get charged. So I think it's coming very soon. There is a Google developer conference coming up in May. Uh, I'd expect something to be announced there maybe about this or how it's all going to work. Hopefully we'll see what happens. Same with the Apple conference in June. 
when that stuff does happen, I will share it with you. And if anything happens in between then and now, I'll share it with you. And if you're interested in how this guy works, this Yuli phone satellite phone, um, I'm going to be putting up a review on this shortly as well. So stay tuned for that. Any questions or any articles that you may see that you want to bring my, to my attention, put them in the comments. I appreciate that. Um, I know some people have been doing that already. So thank you for that. And uh, yeah, guys, exciting times.